This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream. Get access to my streaming service, Nebula, when you sign up for CuriosityStream using the link in the description. You know, I spent the first two months of this year talking about facial recognition and surveillance systems, but now we're in a pandemic and we're all wearing masks, so I guess facial recognition just doesn't work anymore. And while masks might slow down the identification process, Clearview's system learns quickly. How many pixels do you need to identify somebody? And we've had success with even older cameras. We can do things from about 110 pixels by 110. Yeah, there was no way it was going to be that easy. If you're new here, I'm Jordan, and I'm fascinated by the ways that artificial intelligence and algorithms affect us in our daily lives. Consider subscribing if you're also curious about those topics, and comment below if you've been able to get your iPhone to open using a face mask. So if you'd like a detailed explanation as to how facial recognition works, I'll link a video up top that I did that was specifically on Clearview AI a few months ago, but in short, our faces are unique, and so in theory, with enough images of anyone's face, you should be able to train a model to recognize them. In practice, it's a bit more challenging than that. When we train a model on our faces, we're usually using a set of ideal photos. And in practice, the model might come across images from something like a security camera, where the lighting, resolution, and orientation of your face might make it a lot more challenging to recognize you. So, understandably, facial recognition becomes harder when half of your face is covered in, in my case, cats. But that doesn't change the fact that your face is unique. The top half of your face is just as unique as the bottom half, so in theory these facial recognitions should still be able to identify you from just the top half of your face, right? Well, yes, but facial recognition software is designed to look at your whole face. So the issue here isn't the uniqueness of your face, it's the fact that the real-life photos that the model is encountering look different from the training data. Hence why I can't use Face ID to unlock my phone. It's expecting to see my entire face, so it doesn't work when my mask is on. Fortunately, unfortunately, depending on how you see it, this is a problem that software developers have actually been thinking about for a little while. We've talked about China's surveillance system in past videos, but for anyone who isn't familiar, facial recognition is one of the main ways that China tracks the movement of its citizens. And wearing masks is much more common and socially acceptable in East Asian culture than it is in Western culture, so it's likely that developers have been thinking about this task since before the outbreak started. With a significant uptick in the number of people wearing masks, developers have been working on this problem a little bit more than usual, and as of March 9th, one company has reportedly been able to solve it. Hanwang, a facial recognition company that supports surveillance systems worldwide, started working on this problem in early January as the outbreak started in China. They were able to roll out an updated version of their software that could identify people wearing masks about a month later. In fact, they now claim that if used in tandem with temperature sensors, their system might be able to identify people who have coronavirus by identifying them and then seeing whether or not they have a fever. However, their system does still struggle to identify people wearing both a mask and sunglasses, so we'll see how well it performs as we hit the summer. And as we saw in the beginning of this video, Clearview AI is making similar claims in pursuit of a partnership with the federal government for contact tracing. Now, in the US, this wouldn't necessarily be better than Apple's privacy-preserving contact tracing API, because we don't have a centralized surveillance system like China does, and just generally have fewer cameras. There's also a whole host of ethical issues that come with using facial recognition for contract tracing and with Clearview AI as a company specifically. I talk about those issues in the video that I did a few months ago, but I've also included some more recent news updates on what's happening with that company in the description box. In short, while they probably can identify people while they're wearing masks, we're probably better off sticking with non-facial recognition-based contract tracing methods for the sake of both our personal privacy and for the sake of effective contact tracing. So, does facial recognition work with masks? Well, you'll probably have trouble unlocking your phone if it relies on facial recognition, but depending on where you live in the world, a mask probably doesn't protect you from surveillance systems. Having said that, you should still wear a cloth mask when you leave your home, at least while we're still in the midst of a pandemic. And maybe some sunglasses to protect both your eyes from the summer sun and your privacy. If you'd like to learn more about how facial recognition works, you should check out this video that I did on it. And if you'd like to learn more about coronavirus, then you should check out CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream is a subscription streaming service with thousands of documentaries and nonfiction videos. Personally, I watched this documentary about using machine learning to generate a hit musical, and it was super interesting. In fact, since many of us need something to do while social distancing, CuriosityStream is offering a 40% off stay at home deal, so you can get all of this for just $12 a year at curiositystream.com jordan. With your CuriosityStream subscription, you'll also get access to my videos ad-free on Nebula, a streaming platform built 
by and for independent creators like me. CuriosityStream loves independent creators and wants to help us grow our platform, so they're giving my viewers free access to Nebula when you sign up at the link below. By signing up to CuriosityStream, you'll be helping not just me, but the entire educational community as we work together to build a place where we can create creative content that would be too risky to rely on YouTube. Otherwise, the YouTube algorithm thinks that you're going to like this video, so click on it and tell me whether or not the algorithm was right. You can also subscribe to my channel right here and smash that like button down below to let me know that you enjoyed this video. Thanks to all my patrons for your support, and if you'd like to follow me off of YouTube, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Otherwise, I will see you guys next Friday. Bye!